Hey, Judy from Witch Peace Craft. Well, this has been an, an additional introduction to my trip to Amsterdam to do with the MCAL, which I do talk about in the video attached to this and what I'd be doing. And I did the pre-record the video because I wanted to show you the yarn before the MCAL started. Now, when it started, I've just been too busy with work and clue one hit a speed bump. I recently watched a video by Stephen West, happened to be the same day as my son, eldest son's birthday. He was quite emotional about it and he does remind me of my eldest son because he takes a lot of pride in what he does. And when you make an innocent mistake or if people consider it a mistake, it's definitely they take it to heart. So I did feel quite moved by his video. Look, I haven't started the MCAL and I know it's week two clue has already been released. Some people will have finished their MCAL before I even start, but that's fine by me. It's all about learning things and enjoying it and uh, enjoying the journey of making something new and challenging. So all I want you to remember is that um, I think Stephen is very genuine about his business and um, has a lot of passion for knitting and crafting and um, yeah let's just enjoy the MCAL for what it is a challenge and a mystery tour of knitting and remember as my badge says West Knits are the best knits stay tuned and enjoy my visit to Amsterdam bye for now hi Judy from Witch Peace Craft welcome today's video is my traveling yarn adventures from Amsterdam. Yes, we stopped off in Amsterdam on the way home. After a very teary and sad goodbye to my son in London, we flew into Amsterdam, which was things surprise for me. We were having a five day break in Amsterdam before coming home. So Amsterdam, just different for me at all. Like I really don't know. The jury's still out on what I think. So when we flew in from the airport to a certain point, it's all very modern, amazing architecture. And we were staying in the old section called Authentic Harlem. And as we got into there, it was all the older buildings, the canals, greenery. It was lovely. Our hotel was lovely. It was an older place. Um, the only problem was it didn't have a lift. It had a huge staircase to the first floor. But the gentleman who greeted us took our very heavy bags up to our room for us. The room was a little small, but that's because it's an older place. But it was well located and a beautiful room. The location itself gave us pretty much walking distance to most things that tourists want to do. 30 minutes was the most we ever walked to something. So from that point of view, it was great. Unfortunately, the Australian dollar took a big nosedive as we left the UK. So the exchange rate wasn't great. So it was going to be an expensive five days in Amsterdam. We did all the touristy things, two canal rides, ate lots of great food, had amazing Italian, tried some local food. No, I didn't eat herring. My dad used to eat herring and oh, the smell was enough. Um, Went to all the museums. Me, personally, I prefer the Rembrandt Museum. I know everyone raves over the Van Gogh Museum, but I actually preferred the Rembrandt, Rembrandt Museum. It was more interesting for me. Lots of markets. Um, the thing that surprised me about the markets was the absolute abundance of clothes being sold. Recycled, pre-loved clothes. To the point they just lay down a big sheet of plastic or a tarpaulin, put them there in big piles and people were just rummaging through them and picking what they wanted. I have no idea what they charged for an item of clothing but every market had them and there was so much of it. So at least it's not going into landfill. But honestly... The people in Holland can't wear that many clothing. They must be shipping it in from somewhere. There was so much of it. I didn't see any charity or thrift shops, but I did see a lot of vintage clothing shops and bicycles. I've never seen so many bicycles in all my life. Even when I went to Copenhagen, Amsterdam, they're just 
everywhere and you've got to be careful. Don't go walk in their bicycle lane without checking. You'll get run over. Um, so we had a few days, but one night we decided we'd go to the red light district. Why not? You've got to check it out, say you've been, and walking there and things stops and he points and he goes, there's your shop. And there it was, Stephen and Penelope's yarn shop, all lit up at night. He said the travel agent had told him it was 10 minutes from the hotel. And he goes, she was wrong. It was 11 minutes walk from the hotel. And he said, we'll come back tomorrow or one day and you can do some yarn shopping. Uh, that was amazing. I didn't think he'd, you know, track it down and want me to go. But yes, we were going yarn shopping. So I took some photos of the shop at night, which I'll put at the end. And off we went to the red light district, which was interesting Things had been to Portugal, Spain, France, and he said, well, I've seen women on the beach wear less than they do, so there you go. The thing that I found amusing was a small window down low with its red curtains, and there was this foot and ankle to the calf with red painted toenails. And for a fee, if you had a foot fetish, you could go in and play with her foot and massage her foot. So there you have it. There's something for everyone. It's an interesting city. Uh, it's vibrant. It moves fast. Um, a lot of, and it wasn't just tourists, a lot of people socializing after work, drinking, eating. So it was always busy. So that night, because I hadn't decided whether I was going to do the MCAL this year, because I tried it last year and gave up after five rows. I didn't like all the braiding and like Jacob's Ladder look. Um, I still have that yarn somewhere, but I decided after reading about it the next day, we'd go to Stephen and Penelope's and I'd join the MCAL. Well, I didn't realize to buy the kits, you have to buy them online. Now she did try, because I did pick one out of the folder that she had, the sheeting. She went up and spoke to someone, but there was no guarantee they could get it to me in the next couple of days before I flew out. But she did suggest we could put a kit together. She was just so lovely. So first of all, I got my MCAL bag ready to put my yarn in. And inside here is a few treats like there's um, stickers, MCAL stickers, um, labels, a needle gauge. And that was in the bag. Now the color of the bags are just whatever you get. And this was the color they had there. And uh, I quite like the colour. But that's my MCAL bag. And then we started to explore the shop, which has so much lovely yarn, but it's not overpowering. And she helped me put together my MCAL yarn, my four hanks of yarn. Now, some of them were, she had, were in the original one I picked, and some weren't. So here it is. Now, she taught me, you cover the labels to see the colours. There you go. That was, oh, actually, they're out of order. That's how they will go, starting with the beige. So I'll tell you what the yarn is that we picked. So it is, the first one is Life in the Long Grass, 100% Merino, and it's the color Doe. That will be color A. Color B is probably brighter than what was in the actual pamphlet of what we were looking at, but I liked it. And it is Life in the Long Grass. And it is the colour Ignite. It's quite a bright orange. Then that will be colour B. Colour C is by Walk. And it's a it's 90% wool, 10% linen. And it is the colour Squirrel. And then we will finish up with, that will be colour C. And colour B is another company, Neighbourhood comp um, Fibre Company, and this one is 100% organic merino, and its colour is Bol Bolton Hill. So there you have it. They will be my four yarns for the MCAL. Now she made sure there was enough yardage in there for me to be able to do the MCAL. I bought the knitting needles I need because I couldn't remember if I had that size at home just to be on the safe side because I didn't want to get back and find out I didn't have 
the right knitting needles. She also gave me a little project bag, Stephen and Penelope. Look, this shop was really busy and she never was impatient. She didn't rush. She would, she would, because I think she was more senior, she would stop and do other things and come back to me. And we constantly looked at yarn laid out in fours and changing and coming up with what we both thought was a good mix. So yes, I, I really felt comfortable. After feeling uncomfortable in other yarn shops, I felt right at home there. I could have stayed and gone back the next day and the next day. It's such a lovely atmosphere. Thing was amused because where he was standing near the window out of the way, there was a little stuffed dog wearing a knitted dog coat. It looked like one of the ones Stephen West had made in the pink stripes and he thought it was really cute. And that's because my son's flatmate has a French bulldog and I think the stuffed dog was a French bulldog. I think he was hinting I should make it for Brits Lander and I thought for Brits, his dog. And I thought I'll think about it. I actually have now saved in my favourites wish list a couple of the pet patterns by Stephen West. Now my spending at Stephen and Penelope didn't finish there because the whole time we're walking around I kept going to this yarn. And in the end, I decided I will put it in a project because I really love the colour. And it's life in the long grass. And that is the colour mix. And it's just, I don't know what it is. I just really like this blend of colours. And the colour is smolder. And yeah, I bought that one. They are all so beautiful and soft. Now, when I was... Picking that one, the lady said she had made a cowl in this particular yarn and she thought they were a good match. And she held that one up with that. And even Reeve said that is quite a good match. That will look good together. This one is a walk yarn and it is pink peach. 90% wool, 10% linen. So I bought those two as well. Now, Thing thought I was being frugal because he thought I would spend more. But I was well aware... The Australian dollar had bottomed out and it was going to be expensive. So overall at Stephen and Penelope, I do know what each yarn cost and what things cost, but I can't be bothered itemising it all for you. Too much information. Overall, I spent €241 Euro at Stephen and Penelope, uh, which might seem a lot when you think of the exchange rate on the day, but it is beautiful, soft, hand-dyed yarn and of great quality and I think I will enjoy doing it. Look, the MCAL started today and it goes for four weeks. It will probably take me all year. For me, it's about the journey, enjoying it, learning something and trying out the colours. I think that was my mistake last year. I kept trying to keep up with everybody and it took the fun out of it. So I won't be looking at videos that are showing the MCAL, even though I probably will accidentally fall across one. I'm going to enjoy the journey because I really enjoyed shopping for the wool with the lady at Stephen and Penelope. If you ever go to Amsterdam, you really must visit the shop, even if it is just to have a look and say hello. Won't be a moment, I'll pause the video. So my Amsterdam yarn shopping didn't stop there. We were constantly walking around different places and we came across the craft shop and Thing noticed there was a wall of yarn and we decided to have a look. Well, it was mainly the same brand of yarn, but it was brand of yarn I was interested in. Of course, I can't pronounce it, Shrepskis or whatever it is. Ta-da! So I bought three balls of yarn. These two are to go with, <laughs> I'm running out of hands, these two are to go with this yarn that my subscribe sent me. Different subscribers. Because I want to make a lapgan. This particular colour was because Thing picked it. He just liked it. It is a nice bright green, but it doesn't go with the rest of them. This was really reasonable in price because of where it was. But I actually did buy some acrylic color crafter yes i know the bad word acrylic in amsterdam so i actually didn't just shop at stephen and penelope's i did find another little craft shop that sold a lot of things and a bit of yarn so yes 
I had a lot of fun. Um, for some reason, ate a lot of ice cream. <laughs> it was beautiful weather. We had a couple of wet days to the towards the end, but we had really lovely weather, and it was such a lovely um, stop off on the way home. Um, I'd like to go back in probably an April month and see all the flower festivals and the flowers because I reckon seeing the tulips and everything would be absolutely amazing. All the bulbs for tulips are on sale everywhere at the moment over there. I guess it's time to get them ready for them to sprout in spring. Anyway guys, that was my yarn shopping in Amsterdam, my little stopover in Amsterdam, which was really lovely a thing to do and prepared me for the 32 hour flight home. I hope you've enjoyed it. To those new subscribers, I hope you've enjoyed the content and stay with us. I'd like to grow the channel a bit more and get some more people on board. And yes, it was fun. So take care, stay safe, and make sure you have some traveling yarn adventures somewhere, even if it's just in your local area. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.